Come on in, come on in. Come on in, come on in. Uh, welcome to uh, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, what time is that? I've been sleeping. I was supposed to come on this morning, but I was just retired from uh, last night and whatnot. Uh, but I'm on now, uh, Wednesday. Uh, and I want to uh, give you a word of encouragement and also I want to say a word of a prayer. I'm outside with Emily. We're on a patio in our new, our new crib. And so what I want to say to you is that uh, many, many of you and many of God's people just realize that we are in a war, we're in a fight. The Bible lets us know that our weapons of warfare are not corner, but they might have to God through the pulling down of strongholds. Our warfare is not carnal. It is not in flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual war. And the war is after your soul. And the war is after your faith. It's after your belief. And the adversary, the enemy of your soul, the wicked one, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, he does not, he's, a, he's also called a thief. He does not want you to have nothing that's good. He does not want you to have nothing that's positive, but he wants you to live in defeat. He wants you to live beneath your privilege. He don't want you to obtain nothing. He wants you to have uh, be the doorstop. He wants you to be the door doormat. He don't want you to be the head, but he wants you to be the tail. He don't want you to be the uh, lender, but he wants you to be the borrower. And so I want to do, what I want to say to you today is to stay and hang in there because see, what you need to realize is that there are two things that at work while you're in your tribulations because the Bible tells us to glory in tribulations because when you're in your tribulations, it's going to work patience, spirits, and hope. What God is trying to get out of you and what God is trying to get you to, to a place to be patient, to be patient, to remain patient. And when you remain patient, that means that you will be still and listen. Listen. The Bible tells, or tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You cannot hear unless you listen, unless you be still. That's just like in a classroom, when, you, when it's time to take a test, the students that listen the most, the students that listen the most attentively to the instructor, oftentimes those are the ones who will pass the test. And so God wants you to pass the test, and the way that you pass this test is by being still. And what you need to realize and understand is that um, the warfare, the struggles, the pressures, the changes that we go through, there's an ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to, for the reward through your faithfulness. Through your faithfulness, you're going to receive a, a, a prize. The Bible tells us to be not weary in the well doing. If you faint not, while you're in your season, if you faint not in due season, you will reap the harvest. But while you're going through, you must remain patient. You must remain patient and be still. Wait on God. See, because what's happening is that God wants to develop and bring out of you a patience. The Bible tells us impatience possess you, your soul. You don't want to rush anything, but you want to be patient. Because, see, what happens when, when we come up under attack and when we face certain things, we become nervous, we become afraid, and we become weary, or we want to do something. We want to rush to do something. But at that place where you want to rush, rush to do something, don't do nothing at all, but be still and process. Don't allow uh, the emotions from what you're going through, the emotions of your hurts or whatever, uh, make you rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. But wait right there. Don't become angry. Don't become nervous and respond from that anger, that nervousness. But don't do nothing but this. Be still and assess. And in that place where you're going through what you're going through, in the fires of your trials, your tribulations, your dilemmas, or whatever you're facing, be still and ask God for direction. Ask God for direction and guidance. See, because God wants to give you patience. Because in patience, there is direction. God, God direction in His compass is through patience. See, because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And once you have the fruit of the Spirit, you'll be led by the Spirit. The Bible tells us that he that are led by the Spirit are truly called the sons of God. And God wants you to become a son and daughter of His kingdom. Not just a son and daughter, but He wants you to manifest a put in practical application of who you are. Oftentimes, we don't know who we are. We live beneath our privilege for so, more, so much and for lo so long. We are kings and rulers. The Bible says that we are royal people. We are kings and priests that should show forth the praise of him that who brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. See, God has brought you out of a dark place. And in this place that you are light, be grateful for the place that you're in. See, but what God wants to do, God wants you to remain patient and see the thing about it. 
uh, I talked the other day about the wheat and the tear. See, the purpose of the, the tear, uh, when that man went to sleep, when he planted those good stuff, the purpose was it to stop the, the fruit from growing. He don't want you to grow. He don't want you to benefit. He don't want you to benefit from what you already have. See, there are things that you already have in you. You have love in you. You have peace in you. You have kindness in you. You have God's spirit. And God wants you to keep that, but absolutely don't want you to have it. He wants you to turn away and, and do something that misrepresent who you represent and lose your testimony and lose your power. See, your power is in your patience. Your power also is in your obedience. See, the things that we suffer, Jesus said, the Bible said that the things that Jesus suffered, it, it, the things that he suffered, he, he, he got obedience through, or he developed obedience through what he suffered. See, oftentimes, the things that you suffer, it brings about patience, and it brings about obedience. And so obedience will, obedience will get you to, uh, to receive God's harvest, because the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. See, obedience, when you obey God, that's, you just simply have to obey. There's over 3,000 promises uh, in the Bible, and all you have to do is predicate it on obedience. The Bible says, if you walk upright before me, the, the afflictions that I laid upon the Egyptians that he talked in the Old Testament, I will not lay them upon you because I'm God that heal them. See, obedience will get you in the will of God, to keep you in the will of God. And through obedience, also patience. See, because when you're obedient, you will be patient. Even when you feel impatient, there's a patience in you that will say at ease. But also, patience is also self-control. See, many of you are temperamental, not just temperamental uh, as far as anger, but temperamental is across the board, meaning that if you're temperamental in your attitude, you'll be also temperamental in how you eat when you get, when you get hungry or when you get in trouble or when you get under duress, you'll go get some food. Your food becomes your comfort. Or just, just all of a sudden, across the board, you intemperate. You intemperate even your thoughts. Uh, you wish you washed in all your ways. And you see, don't get like that because the Bible said that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and he can't receive them from God. So, but God don't want you to become double-minded, but God wants you to have one mind. And the Bible said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And that's a mind of peace. The Bible also said, God, Jesus said, I would that you be in peace. Then we would that you have perfect peace. Perfect peace is peace twice. God wants you to have you have perfect peace. He wants you to be whole uh, in your thoughts. He wants you to be whole even when you're in trouble or even in when you're in a dangerous situation or when you're in your tribulation and when you're facing pain or you're in the facing something uh, that's painful or that's hurtful that you're being tried. The trying of your faith. God wants you to remain patient. I hope this makes sense. And also realize that the purpose of the tears and the tears come when we become angry or we lose focus. So that's why you always got to stay focused. Stay focused on your purpose. Stay focused on what is that you want to do in life that God has called you to do. Stay focused and remain calm. And beware of the adversary because he's going to bring things to, to stop you and distract you from being focused. Because when he's able to distract you from being focused, that's when he's able to plant seeds. Seeds of bitterness. Seeds of discontent. Seeds of division. And see, But God is not the author of division nor he's the author of confusion. But God brings peace. God said, I come that you have life and life more abundantly, but also he's peace, the prince of peace. And he'll keep you perfect in perfect peace when your mind is continuously stayed on him. And the only way your mind can be continuously stayed on him is by focusing, is by having peace, but also obedience. And obedience is coming through your pain. And in your pain, you can't complain because if you complain in your pain, then you might lose uh, to your development because in your pain there's a development stage or there is a maturity level wherein you'll be able to become seasoned uh, for the journey or what God has for you. That's why the Bible says in Peter, uh, be always ready to give an answer but let your speech be seasoned with salt and let what's in you uh, speak with hope and meekness and fear. And so God is after your mouth with aroma, with season, with flavor. Also, with what you're going through, good morning, uh, Elder, what you're going through is bringing out a flavor or a maturity. God wants you to become mature. God wants you to grow up. See, Paul said that when I was a child, I mind those things as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. Lay aside every way and sin that so easily beset you. See, God wants you to shed off certain things and God wants you to mature and go forward and grow. God wants you to grow up now. God wants you to put away those things that you did last week, last year, in your last season. 
And the fact that you're in a new season, God wants you to embrace your new season with a, a new attitude, a mature attitude, an attitude where you bite your tongue, an attitude where you use wisdom, with an attitude where you lead with your ears and not your mouth, an attitude where you're focused, an attitude where you're strong, with an attitude that, that you will not waver, with attitude where you become steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of God. See, God wants you to be focused and remain focused because in your focus, that's where your power is coming. In your focus, that's where God's glory is coming. Just like in the upper room when they were focused and all was together and had all things in common at that focus place, that's when the Bible said that it came out rushing of a mighty wind. And see, God wants to see a rushing of a mighty wind in your life and in your situation, but you must remain focused. And by, in the suffering that you go through, it brings about obedience. Obedience. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. And so I have good news to you. I know it seems bad and it feels bad, but through your suffering, God is bringing obedience. And obedience is bringing God's will and is bringing his blessing. See, because there's an open heaven and this is also a season of miracles. Just like I said, my son is going to walk. And this is a, a, a month of miracles. This is an hour of miracle. If you need a miracle, God got your miracle with your name on it. And all you got to do is call it out and identify. The Bible said, call those things that be not as though they, though they were. God wants you to give it a name. God wants you to give your miracle a name or break to a name. This is your hour of miracle. There's an open heaven. There's an abundance of rain that's above your head. There's a cloud uh, that's above your head. And God is ready to bless. And God is ready to pour out a blessing upon you. See, because after the suffering and after the battle, that's when that's when the rain comes. God is sending a rain to your life. God is sending a rain to your situation. But you must bear. You must take the test. You must pass the test. And the moment that you pass your test, God is going to send your rain. God is going to send your blessing with your name on it. See, but God wants you to posture yourself and remain focused. Focus and be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in God's work. And what's his work? His work is doing his will. His work is occupying till he comes. His work is being a witness. His work is, is saying faith. His work saying, God, I trust you. His work saying, God, I believe you. His work is saying, stand still and see the salvation of God. And salvation is his glory. His is matter. His weight in matter. His is direction. His is angle. This is authority. God wants to give you a greater authority, but you must remain patient and trust Him. And, and 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 don't move. Don't move right there, but let Him. Let Him take you to a different place. Let Him take you to a greater place, but you must remain patient. Because in your patience, God is going to call your harvest to fall upon you. God's going to call you to walk into your new land. And God's going to call you to receive your harvest in this day and time. God bless you and God bless you. Say, hey. Say hello. Say hello. 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 Say we gotta remain patient, we gotta trust God. And I hope y'all, hope this word has really helped you. Do me a favor, listen and share, but be encouraged. But the suffering that you go through is bringing about your patience. It's getting you in line. That's what's happening, it's getting you in line. Even Paul said he buffed his body. He beat his body as a boxer because when he speaks to others, him himself, he won't become a castaway suit. So what he was doing, he was focusing his spiritual eyes. He was focusing on his mindset where he can receive what God has for him. And so what God is doing with the buffing and with the changes and with the sufferings and the pain, God is aligning you and he's adjusting your spirit and he's adjusting your faith that you might be able to receive what God has for you because what God has for you is large. And so God, if your mind is not large, if your faith is not large, you won't miss it. You'll miss it. You won't see it. See, but God is readjusting and repositioning you through your pain and your suffering and your fire. And what he's doing now, he's preparing you, he's stretching you. We're in. Uh, you can receive your harvest. This day and time, God bless you and heaven smile on you. And may all God's best be yours. Have a good day.